Hi guys, how are you doing? It's your boy Dave. And uh, remember that if uh, this is the first time you are watching any of my videos, you should uh, click the red subscribe button below. All right, so click the red subscribe button below this place. I'm moving my mouse. So today, I'm gonna be bringing you all the latest gist about the trip uh, of um, uh, President Muhammad Buhari and um, a lot of Nigerian governors, I think about four governors and um, Buhari's whole family and um, a number of senators to China. All these people trooped to China. So uh, the question now is why, what is so important that um, we have that number of delegates going to China? What's happening in China? What's the latest Ching Chong Ching happening in China? Now feel free to comment if, um, uh, just drop your comments because I can see your comments, all right? So that we can uh, uh, we can have an interactive uh, session. As you can see, this uh, session is live. All right, now the first thing is, uh, I'm gonna read this first page that says, uh, Buhari traveled uh, to China with uh, four senators. So President Muhammad Buhari will be departing Nigeria for China on Friday, August 31st, that is yesterday, to participate in the seventh summit of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, uh, scheduled to hold on September 3rd. The president's first engagement in the country will be an interactive session with Nigerian community in China at the Nigerian embassy. According to a statement issued by President's uh, spokesman, Femi Nandeshino, the President will deliver his remarks as the current chair of ECOWAS at the high level dialogue between China and African leaders, uh, business representatives, and African entrepreneurs. The Nigerian President is scheduled to join President Jinping and other African leaders for the opening and uh, roundtable sessions of the 2018 uh, summit towards an even stronger China-Africa community with a shared future. So, so guys, from what I understand, is like um, China has been making serious efforts in the past, let me say, ten years, to strengthen uh, economic relationships and business opportunities between China and most African nations. You understand? I think they they they, are, they were heavily involved in, in Zimbabwe because I think China is mining is it diamond from Zimbabwe. <coughs> Sorry, they are heavily involved in several uh, countries. So I feel uh, that China is really making serious efforts for the next. Let's say what will happen in the next fifty years. All right. And remember that uh, there was a news that was published in Financial Times the other day of Donald Trump beefing. Uh, Buhari while meeting with uh, the president of Kenya. So uh, uh, it's as if uh, Nigeria is tilting towards China while Kenya is tilting towards America. So let's see, there is a, a huge delegate list of people that, uh, that attend, that went with Buhari's team. So I'm just gonna basically show you uh, the full list Remember that you can drop comments in the comment section below once you're uh, there. I can see uh, most of you, right? And um, I, I'm happy that you guys are enjoying the whole show. So I'm gonna show you a whole lot of things that happened uh, about this Chinese thing. And then some funny stuff that happened uh, somehow relating to politics too. So this is the list of people that went with uh, Buhari to China. So we have um, uh, President Sentorash, then we have uh, senators and we have ministers. So the president's entourage is made up of Governor uh, Mohammed Abdullahi Abubakar of Bauchi State, the Lagos State Governor, Governor Akimumi Ambode, the uh, Governor of uh, Governor Badaru Abubakar of Jigawa State, and um, guess who? Rochas Okorocha, uh, Governor of Imo State. Then there are senators too. And uh, the senators are Senator Abdullahi Adamu Nasarawa of uh, Nasarawa State, Senator George Akume of uh, Beno State, and Senator Godwill Akmabio of uh, Akwaibom, and Ali Wamako of uh, 
Sokoto State. So finally, the next uh, people that were seen here, uh, the ministers, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyama, Minister of Transport, Rotimi Amechi, Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, and Minister of FCT, Mohamed Bello, and the uh, Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Okechuku, and Nelama, and the uh, Minister of Budget, National Planning, Udoma, Udoma, Udo, whatever. Uh, Minister uh, Suleiman Adamu, and uh, Minister of State, uh, Petroleum Resources, Ibe Kachuku, Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika. Others are the National Security Advisor, Babagana Mungono, uh, the Director General, National Intelligence Agency, Ahmed Abubakar, the Group Managing Director, NMPC, my county Baru. All right, guys, and uh, does this create a similar scenario to you guys? Remember, uh, uh, the last time Buhari actually traveled was when he went for 10 days living in London. Uh, the Vice President of Shibajo did a lot of things, a lot of things within that few 10 days. That 10 days even seemed like one year because uh, Within that 10 days, uh, there was this, a lot of, uh, uh, number one, he ordered the reformation of SARS. He ordered, uh, he fired the uh, DSS uh, chief. And what else, like a, a couple of other things that the vice president did while Buhari was away. Now the president is away again. Are we expecting that kind of uh, drastic actions within uh, between now and the 3rd of 4th of September? Uh, that's the question that uh, we got to answer. You get. So let me know what you guys expect. What do you expect to happen within uh, this uh, period that, uh, uh, so that Buhari is answer. out? Okay, so I'm seeing some of your comments. I'm seeing Osaji oh, knows How are you doing? Uh, Sajay, what's up? I'm seeing... Uh, no, Oshumole is not a monk. I don't think Oshomole is a monk because uh, he's not on this page. You know, he's the party chairman. They can't just live with everybody before there will be some sort of political cue behind you. You get, you get what I'm saying? So they can't just live with everybody. Okay. So uh, let's see what people are saying in the comments. Remember, I told you there are more gists. So uh, there are more gists. Let me just see what people are saying in the comments on this one. Then I'll show you more gist. So this one said, uh, just the waste our money for travel, we not get head. I remember when a leader in the Republic of Congo was sick, 78 gathered, gathered him on his way to the hospital. Our president is a very good mathematician. He divided the 78 into three categories, governors, senators, and uh, nine ministers, mission to Asia, journey to China, just to support the lifeless one. Bravo. Uh, this was said, I just need to warn you guys that this is a fo public forum. And in a public forum, uh, people don't use their real names, which means they can use vulgar language. So if, if you are not uh, ready for any sort of vulgar language, you should um, kind of um, skip this section of the video. And we'll talk in the next two minutes while we go to the next news. You understand what I'm saying? Now remember that you can share this video so that your friends on Twitter and um, on Facebook and WhatsApp can join in on the live uh, streaming. So far, I think I have 82 people watching live. This is amazing. All right, so this person said, good one. The list contains our change agents. I hate it when any member of the corrupt PDP, IPOB member follows a patriotic president to any of the overseas trip. Go well, good representatives of the common man. Nigerians are seriously praying for a safe journey as we embark on another life-changing travel to our dear country, for our dear country. So this one says, uh, what do you mean by, uh, are you a citizen of Nigeria? Uh, I'm going to see if there's any other sensible comment. This one is just, uh, actually, I'm kind of skipping some comments because they are sort of too vulgar. This one said, another meaningless and fruitless jamboree loading. Anyways, it's Nigerians that are footing the bill. Meanwhile, contact us for our whatever. Uh, so I'm going to stop here. Let's see the next news. Hi, Nigerians. Look at how they photoshop Buhari to Tsiruado. So Oshomole didn't go. Oshimajo didn't go. Uh, but some other people went. So let's see what's here. Uh, this second news says, Wangma Ko Akmabio Akume orders leave for China with President Buhari. So this one is just like showing photos after they arrived. Uh, from or just before they leave. 
So let's see the His Excellency Senator Aliu Magatakada uh, Wamako departs to China to attend FOCAC and discuss infrastructural financing with President Jinping. Chairman uh, Northern uh, Senators from today, from today Friday, depart for China to participate in the seventh summit of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation. Before the formal opening of FOCAC summit, the President Muhammad Buhari, on his in his capacity as current chair of ECOWAS, is expected to deliver remark at the high-level dialogue between China and African leaders, business representatives, and African entrepreneurs. So uh, look at them. That's Akbabio, and I believe this to be Wamako. And uh, look at more pictures. So I'm going to show you more pictures. Hey, Blessing, how are you doing? Uh, uh, my sister, I don't know. Well, I me, mean, I, I feel I should go to China too. You understand? How much is uh, how much is uh, what you call the flight ticket to China? Let us even Google. You know, in my once you're watching my videos, we normally go and Google. You get what I'm saying? Let's go do some googling. Uh, how much is flight ticket to China? So we have to book to our front tickets. So this is Air, Air China flight tickets. Let's see how much it costs. So that we can see if we can go to China too, so that um, uh, the deal we can enhance the deal. You understand? We'll participate in the discussion and promote the economic development of Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even know which particular city they are in China, but I'm just gonna say uh, Hong Kong. I don't know which particular city the Economic Forum is holding in China. So uh, it's trying to load the cost of the ticket. Really? Is it that cheap? What does it eight dollars? Recommended flight. Oh, okay, this is not actually moving from Nigeria. We need uh, Lagos. Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah, Lagos, Nigeria to China. Yeah, search. So in case you don't know what I'm doing now, I'm trying to see how much is the cost flight ticket to China so that we can see whether all of us that are on this live video, including you, 80, 99 of you guys, all of us to go to China. Okay, okay the trip to China now, the economy is somewhere around 360,000 Naira. What I don't know is whether it's a um, tour and fruit trip. Round, that's one way. So let's do round trip because we cannot just go there and stay. We have to go there and then return. Round trip to China. On September 8th. So, some of you that want to travel, if you have about um, 500,000 naira, I believe, 360,000 naira is the uh, flight ticket going forward. If you want to come back, um, there's no return ticket. So, uh, I think, let me say, if you just have like 700k, you should be able to go to China and come back. So, let us get back to. Um, what we were reading before. So let's see some, some more pictures that we see comments about people that went to China. Here is Rochas Okorocha. Um, that is Rochas. And um, here is more pictures. More pictures. That's Rochas. So can somebody tell me for, of a, of a, for real, you understand? Why does Rochas always wear that? Um, is this shower? What do they call that? This thing he's, he puts on every um, outfit he puts on across his shoulder. You understand? Look at what I'm talking about. Why does Rochas always wear it? No matter what outfit Rochas puts on, he must look at it. He must put it on. So, why is that so? Why is that so? I want to know. Look at it. Uh, you get what I'm saying? Why is it so that every he has different colors? You, you get so he must put it on on every. <laughs> Charlie and Evelyn, yeah, uh, uh, it's it's fun having you online too. Uh, Harry said our country has been mortgaged by this Akara leadership. <laughs> You're making me laugh too much. Which one is Akara leadership? This was saying, my bro. We cannot even understand the language, so no need. And that's the thing. In case you guys don't know, 
I think this is a good time to mention it for some of you. If you are still in school, you understand, or you have somebody in school, in most universities in Nigeria, or some universities in Nigeria, there's a Chinese uh, language training, uh, whatever, whatever, club that they can join. So if you go to the school, I think I think they do it in Nam Gazikiwe University. There's one in Unilag. I don't know about other schools. So you can find out from your school. You understand? Is there a place you can learn Chinese language within the school or somewhere in the town of the school? If you go there, they will enroll you on a training. I think it's one year training while you are still in school. If you pass the Chinese language exam after doing the training, they will send you to China after graduation. At least I know four or five people now that have gone to China after graduation. You understand? So if you are looking for such opportunities, uh, go and sign up if you are still in school. And of course, if you are no longer in school, Chinese language is a good language to learn. The reason it's a good language is that, as you can see, China is making serious efforts, serious efforts to, uh, to uh, grow into Africa economically. So imagine when they start building all these big factories, they will need people that can speak both China and uh, and uh, English language to communicate with Africa. And if, in fact, all other uh, countries that they deal with. And of course, there you can be teaching English in, in China. You go to China, go back to China, become an English teacher. So they pay you well, from what I, I, I understand. So uh, the Chinese language, I, I think is the hardest language to learn on earth. But at the same time, it is the language that, um, that can fetch you money if, instead of you graduating and looking for a job. You understand? I've never seen anybody that regretted learning a new language. So. Uh, you can you can uh, go ask around. You can Google self, Google Chinese training center near me. You will see, you will see. So this was uh, Amy said is a way of colonizing people. That's the thing. Uh, powerful nations usually directly or indirectly colonize uh, less powerful nations. Uh, as long for me, as long as it's not using brutal force, it's cool if it's uh, what they call it financial agreement and stuff. As long as it benefits uh, all both parties at the same time too. So that's Rochas, um, and uh, this is Nigerian Air Force. Is this Air Force or Airways? Okay. Okay, yes, this is presidential jet. It's okay. So that's them going to the jets. So I'm going to see what people are saying here, then I'll show you the next gist. There's more gist. There's gist, so don't go anywhere. So this one said, is that all? Uh, it was a message only going to secretly discuss about campaign funds based on the entourage, but it will, but it is allowed. The problem PDP will face is campaign funding and how to channel it in. And EFCC will be on standby to monitor proceedings. Yeah, I believe EFCC will always be there to monitor proceedings. But if you are thinking that PDP will have money with campaign funding, sorry, have issues with campaign funding, sorry, 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 sorry. PDP has been in power for 16 years. So just forget it, that money can never be a problem. You understand? E EFCC may be a problem, whatever, whatever may be a problem. Agree uh, to, to run together might be a problem, but money, no, 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 money cannot be a problem. This was said, stupid party, go and sell your country. In case you don't know what's happening, they are going for an economic summit. That's what they're going for, one economic summit like that. Make them no come back or enjoy your sabbatical. Our problems left Nigeria today. Osimba Day, Nigeria take over and hand over to Saraki. So these these are these roaches and uh, making a nice picture. Our leaders are clueless. All of them look at Kenya and Rwanda. See, you can even though Nigerian economy has fallen relatively, you can still compare compare Kenya and Rwanda. Let me show you guys. Uh, Nigeria GDP, let's go check something. Uh, Nigeria GDP per capita. Uh, GDP per capita kind of says the uh, kind of uh, the average income of the average Nigerian. So the average income of the average Nigerian uh, is about 700,000 naira. 750,000 naira, that's the average income of the average Nigerian. Remember that this doesn't cater for the disparity in income. That's GDP per capita. Some of you that know, you know economics, you can explain this better. So it's saying that if you get all the income of all Nigerians, you understand, this is the average. Basically, it means that if you take how to get it is, you take the general income of Nigeria as a whole, as a country, 
If you take it, Nigeria sells oil, crude oil, whatever, uh, what sells cassava will make an income. If you take all that income and divide it by the number of people in Nigeria, which is 180 million, you will get $2,100. Uh, uh, $2, That's the average income. So another thing you can see about Nigeria's income is that between 2010, when Jonathan took over, it started rising sharply. See, the, the one in blue, it rising sharply, very, very sharply. Okay, it has been rising consistently from 2000, all right? From 2000 that uh, uh, Basanja took over. Uh, this is what we had from 1985 to 1999. We were in a big mess under this military regime, big mess under Abacha. But from the time Basanja took over, uh, our economy started getting better, better and better and better. So Jonathan took over somewhere here in 2010. As you can see from 2010, it rose sharply. Our economy got much better and then much better again. But after handing over from to Buhari from 2014, it started falling again very sharply. So we are now here that is still falling. But um, I hope it's correct. But if you compare it, that's why I'm showing this. If you compare it to to Ghana, you see what Ghana has here. Uh, you see Ghana's economy is blue, is green. The green one that you're seeing here, this green guy. Let me put my mouse here. You see that the economy is not still compared to us, even though it is already heading to become the same. You see, we're we're about to collide. Ours is falling. Ghana's own is kind of correcting and getting better. It seems that uh, they are going to catch up with us very soon. And uh, if care is not taken, they might overtake us. But for now, Nigeria is better than Ghana. What of uh, Kenya? As you can see, Kenya and Ghana are on the same level. Kenya has been consistently rising, and they are about to catch us too. But for now. We are still better. Some people are saying that uh, there are two theories why this thing is um, falling. Nigeria started falling from 2014, 2015. Remember that Jonathan handed over in the mid middle of 2015. The first theory is that um, oil prices fell from this period, from uh, 2000 and mid 2014, 2015. Oil prices started falling. So they said uh, it's not actually Buhari's fault. But the thing is that even though oil prices have been falling, it has started correcting. So we're expecting to start seeing correction. Why is it that correction has not started happening? But if we see GDP per capita of some other oil con uh, oil producing countries, we see that it has started correcting. I'll show you. But then another theory why this is um, why this is falling is that people some people say it's uh, incompetent leadership, incompetent leadership. That's why some people that's what some people are saying that is the reason why this has been falling. So let's see the GDP per capita of another oil producing country. Let's say Qatar, or let's say Qatar per capita. So remember that this is average income and doesn't cater for disparity in income because some people can be earning 10 million naira per month and some people are earning 50,000 naira per month. But when you draw average, it will be around 5 million, okay? So let's say Qatar. So we're gonna see whether um, after falling oil prices, it started correcting. So this is Qatar from 2014. As you can see, they made a sharp fall. So, but as you can see here, they have started correcting. It's no longer, the fall is no longer sharp, you see? It has started correcting. You see, it's burning small, small. Other oil producing countries like uh, UAE, as you can see, they had a fall, but they are correcting already. Their fall was not as sharp, but they are correcting, you see? Look at Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia fell a little, but it's correcting too. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. But when you compare it to Nigeria, there is no correction yet. We are still falling. So uh, that's the two theories. Is either we have incompetent leadership or is the oil price that caused it to fall. But no matter how you look at it, we are still better than all these countries. So I don't believe that these countries, are, even though they are doing well for their economy, Nigeria is still a better place uh, than they are. So all these Ghanaians in my timeline, uh, you guys should put a respect on Nigeria. You should put a respect on Nigeria. We're still like, hey, hey, what's up, Bertrand? How are you doing? And uh, Peter Famuiwa, you say, what about Venezuela? Hey, now Venezuela has issues. According to Venezuela's GDP, they're supposed to be a first world country. Let me show you guys some economies. This is uh, Venezuela. First of all, check this. The GDP of all these other oil-producing countries, Qatar, 
uh, UAE, Saudi Arabia is $59,000. That's the average income of anybody in Qatar, $59,000. How much is $59,000 in Nigeria? Uh, that's 59,000 times 365, 365. That's how much $1 is costing in Naira. 21 million naira per month. Man, I need to go to Qatar. All of you guys that are in Qatar, you people should show us the way. You people should show us the way. Or oh, UAE, you should show us the way. This is the average monthly income of somebody in any of these three countries. But Nigeria is like the 13th oil producing country, but our average income is 700 or something thousand naira. So you can't compare, the disparity is too high. But let us look at the GDP, Venezuela, Venezuela GDP per capita, GDP per capita in Venezuela. So in Venezuela, as you can see, they are at um, $12,000, uh, but their economy is actually very bad. But then their expected GDP is um, high. You get what I'm saying? So the average income is expected to be high, but the disparity is so much that the, the, the economy is so bad. So it's like there's so much corruption that only few people take all the money. You get what I'm saying? Only very few people. Their their, their currency is so it's just it's just going down the drain. It's getting worse and worse. They their their president even launched a cryptocurrency to salvage the situation. I raised like seven hundred million naira from the cryptocurrency. Some of you that know about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, they launched a cryptocurrency they call Petrocoin. Raised seven hundred million dollars. At the end of the day, it still didn't look like uh uh like it's it's changed much of uh whatever problem they were facing you get so uh according to economists they say that if your gdp is above twelve thousand dollars you're expected to be uh a first world country that's a, a developed nation if it's between four thousand and um and uh, eleven thousand nine hundred you're expected to be a developing nation but if it is below 4,000, you are underdeveloped. Nigeria's own is below 4,000. Even though in 2013, 2014, we almost crossed. Look at look at the numbers here, look, 2014. We are 3,221. If we had made another year of progress, we would have crossed to uh, a developing nation. For now, according to that rating, we are still underdeveloped. We are still below 4,000 GDP per capita. All right, guys, now that I will have done some economies, let's go back to China and see what's up in China. So uh, I'll show you some pictures of some of these people that are uh, politicians that are in China for the Economic Forum. So let us see. Uh, this is a picture of President Buhari leaving Abuja. Picture of President Buhari today departed Abuja for China ahead of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation. You understand summit in Beijing. So this is Buhari and his wife. I think his his daughter or something went to. So I think uh, his daughter went to. This is China, Buhari and his wife to China. So that's them in the private jet. I think this is one of his daughters. I'm not sure, but I think so. That's Buhari and his wife in the private jet. All right. Just uh, I don't think it's a private jet. I think I think this is that. Nigerian government Air Force jet. Just uh, close your eyes and imagine what Saraki Corinthians butterfly will would be saying if it was gay that took even his pet dog as an official visit to, on taxpayers' money. They said Buhari looking fresh as always. Go well, my presidio. More trips to come next year. This was said to Buhari. This is just another family holiday sponsored by Niger Delta crude money and nothing more. If you are expecting him to go and be bargain for Igbo importers in China, shame on you, low IQ. Uh, this other person said, image credit Femi additional. The final trip to Daura is the one we are eagerly waiting for in May 2019. Zombies are pathetic, PMA till 2023, inshallah. So you guys are watching this. Who do you want to win 2000 and, um, and um, 19 presidential election. Let me just know who you guys are supporting. The best president, I love this handsome president, PMB to, to Nigeria is one of the best country in the world. Uh, very beautiful people. Buhari is really a blessing from God. 
So people are just um, writing. But the jobless, aggressive, li lifeless, lazy, idiotic. Oh, this is too much. Okay, so we are gonna stop here, and there goes the lifeless man on, Malam on another jamboree. So let me know what. Let me see what you guys are having there. Let's read up. Let me know. So I'm saying, okay, oh, great. He said, please don't compare Nigeria to any other African country because Nigeria is the giant of Africa. Meanwhile, Nigeria is going down every day. Even Niger is more Niger is more superior than Nigeria. That's what Oko uh, said. Yeah, I think is it Niger? I think is it Niger or Mali? I think Niger is fighting a war now. They have insurgency and they're fighting a war currently. So Osage and us is going is going is supporting uh Shawore uh AAC. Um, VCM Media is supporting Shawere. Shawere is the next president of Nigeria. And um, um, Mark Jonathan said, please let Buhari move out from that place. And uh, Charlie Enebeli said, Venezuela is the poorest uh, Latin America for now. That's the thing. According to their income, they're supposed to be very rich. You get what I'm saying? The average income. It's supposed to be very rich, but the disparity between the rich and the poor is like only a few people are taking all that money. The poor is just suffering. There was one that was saying the amount of money you need to have to buy stuff in Venezuela. Let me see if I can see it in, in, uh, in Google again. It turns out that to buy anything in Venezuela, the, the weight of the money you have to go with will be heavier than that. Thing. Let's see. Uh, let me, what do I search for now? In Venezuela, the yeah, economy is so bad. It's almost like that of Zimbabwe. Hyper inflation has caught up with them. What can nine thousand US dollar buy in Venezuela right now? Um, let me see. I saw that video documentary somewhere. Okay, yeah. Look at this thing. This is funny now. Just look at this, guys. Just look at this. To buy a tissue paper, oh, my screen is still loading. To buy a tissue paper, one roll. You know one roll of tissue paper, they say how much they say it in Nigeria, like 15 naira. To buy a, a tissue paper in Venezuela, you have to go with all this money. If I, yes, I know use this money directly to go to the toilet. <laughs> oh, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> like, why would I go with all these things to just buy a tissue paper? That's how, how worthless their money is. It's just like in Nigeria now, for some of you that don't really understand. Nigeria now, five naira can no longer buy anything. That's how bad our own economy has gone. So to buy pure water, you have to go with two notes of five naira, true or false, because five naira is, uh, pure water is 10 naira. You go with two notes of five naira. So in their own currency, to buy a tissue paper, you have to go with all this money. Imagine. It's like I should just go and change some Venezuelan money. I use it to do music video. I'll be spraying money. Yahoo's, you think it's, <laughs> you think I'm a man. You don't know that I just spent 15 naira. Because this thing worth 15 naira. That's what it means. A, tissue, a roll of tissue paper, 15 naira. This is worth 15 naira. How much money of how much of their money is worth 15 naira? I think there are other comparison. Okay, if you want to buy tomato, all right, see now. See all the money you have to go with to just buy how many tomato? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, around eight. It is so bad in Venezuela. All right, come and buy chicken now. Look at look at all the money you have to go with to buy chicken. If I ask, I don't go thief the chicken directly. So their, their currency in Venezuela is just, their currency is very, very bad. Very, very bad. Hyperinflation. Very bad. So it happened in, in, in Zimbabwe to the point that China, uh, Zimbabwe decided to, to switch from using their own currency to using uh, uh, Chinese currency. They signed a deal with China to switch to Chinese currency because their currency was so bad. I think this had happened in Ghana at some point. What Ghana did was they divided their money by 1,000. Whatever money you see in Ghana at that time, I don't know whether it happens now. Some of you that are Canadians, you should tell us. You will see in Ghana, they will put the amount of money at the top, then they will rule it. You understand? They will draw a rule to show you that they have minus uh, 1,000 from it or divided it by 1,000 so that they will not have to get to this uh, very bad extent, hyperinflation. All right, so I'm still reading. So if you're dropping comments, be sure I'm saying it. Yes, Osage Ono said it's like Zimbabwe. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Venezuela is, is that bad now. Very bad. They have got to the stage of Zimbabwe. So Iwuru boy said, whatever business Buhari have in China before he traveled, 
It should let the upcoming leaders to know so they can go along with it. Uh, PDP or no PDP, we don't need old fools anymore. We need vibrant youth to blow up everything. <laughs> this, this, uh, this is very interesting because uh, I made some startling discovery the other day about um, about the age of contestants in Nigeria, the age of presidential contestants in Nigeria. You will be surprised at uh, what the age of presidential contestants in Nigeria is. You get. So I think I made this discovery. The average age of the Nigerian governor or leader now is actually 55 years old. Uh, let me just let you know some of the ages of some of these politicians so we can uh, look at uh, whether we are voting for young people or not. So Showere, first of all, is 47 years old. Uh, uh, Philanduro Toye is 47 years old, the same age with Showere. Then, uh, Kisley Mogalo is 55 years old. Kisley Mogalo is the same age with Saraki. Bukola Saraki, the Senate president, is 55 years old. Um, Erufai is 55 years old. Uh, who else? I think Ambode is 55 too. Uh, who else? Which other politician are we looking at? So um, this Tinubu is 66 years. Tinubu is 66 years old. So if Buhari wins in 2019, Tinubu will be 70 years by the time Buhari will be finishing in 2023. So uh, Oshim Ajo is 61 years old. So he will be about 65 when Buhari will be rounded up. Uh, who else? Who else are we looking at? So most of these politicians, their average age is around 55 years old. And the young contestants that we have, young in quotes, uh, they are between uh, four, uh, 47. And the case you think young people have not been running in quotes, good luck, Jonathan was 51 years old when he became president of Nigeria. You understand? Good luck was 51. Then, uh, who else? Uh, what I've not checked, I think I should verify how old um, Obasanjo was when he took power. You understand? But another person that you should check out is, uh, I'm trying to check out how old Obasanjo was when he took power. So that, the reason I'm saying all this is because most Nigerians used to think that it's, it's old people that, used to, that has been ruling us. But if you check, the data kind of says otherwise. Obasanjo, I'm just trying to check Obasanjo. Let me do it so that everybody will see. Obasanjo Wikipedia. So if we go to Wikipedia, we'll see most of Nigerian leaders were born in just 1960s, like two years after uh, Nigeria got independence. So most of them are 55, 56. So Obasanjo was born in, uh, where can't I say his age? Born, 1937. He's 81 years old. So let's see how old he was when he became president the second time. So the, the second time, 1937 minus 2000. He was 63 years old when he became president. So the, f the second time, but the first time, I'm trying to see how old he was in the 1970s. Uh, years of service nickname, political party PDP, nationality born, presented by, in office, he was, he was in office in 1975. So let's see, 1975, how old he was. He was 38 years old when he was the president. And then Donald Duke was 38 years old when Donald Duke became the, the, the governor of his state. I think Donald Duke is like 56 years old now. You understand? Currently, Donald Duke is 56 years old. Um, he's younger than Oshibajo. Then, um, who else? I'm just showing you some age. Buhari was around the same age, was around this age. I think 38 years old when he became the president of Nigeria. When he was 38. And um, another person, Gowon, was 29 years old. So the young has been ruling this country, guys, if you don't know. Gowon was 29 years old. Another thing we can, another person we can check is Babangeda. 
So some of you that think age will just do a magic, I don't believe so because this Nigeria has been ruled by young people from day one. Wikipedia. So all these people were less than 40 years old when they were president and governors. Buhari was, was a governor, I think at the age of, is it 24? So Eastern region, not Eastern region or something governor. So let's see when he became president, uh, president by, uh, in 1984, in office, chief of army staff, 1985. He took office in 1985. So let's see, uh, from the day he was born to 1985, he was born in, in uh, 1941. He's currently 77 years old. 1941, younger than uh, Obasanjo, and two years older. So IBB is two years older than Buhari, and about four years older than Obasanjo. So we're checking, he was 44 years old when he become, became the president. You see, the young has been ruling this country from day one, forget it. It's not about young, it would, I mean, I'm not even into young uh, uh, presidents. What I'm into is presidents that are competent. So if you are young and you are competent, very good. You get what I'm saying? So what I think what we should be looking at is competency. If you are young, you are showing competency, good. But if we are going, if you are if you are just telling me to vote so, for someone just based on the fact that they are young, forget it. I'm not interested. If you go to student universities, see how much some student union presidents are embezzling. People that are 22, 23, they're embezzling funds are running away. You get so it's not about age. So um, let me see what some of you guys are saying. Um, Mick Dave said, uh, we agree the young people has been ruling Nigeria, but the same politicians. Yeah, that's the thing. It's as if after that period, they kind of hijacked Nigeria. New young people couldn't come into power again. It was difficult. It's difficult. Can we even get somebody of that age to rule Nigeria this time around? I doubt that we can get somebody of this age to suddenly become president. I think we'll have to get into 2040 before we start saying. I think um, once we start passing 2030, the children of the current leaders would have finished studies abroad and have joined politics and they will be able to uh, take over presidency at a younger age. That's what I believe. But if you are expecting magic between now and 2030, I'm, I'm not optimistic about it. This one said, I wish they stayed there forever. Cheese. <laughs> <Who's a cheese? laughs> This was we want a more year less so we're, so we're a AAC party come 2019. One thing I've noticed is that most people online, not online, well, let me say YouTube, kind of supports Showere seriously. Godwin said, God will need your help in Nigeria. God will need your help in Nigeria, as a seriously. This was said, but we kept recycling same folks. It's not like we're recycling it. What people don't understand is that these people take it by force. You understand? When Obasanjo became president, the president did not just fall on him. He took it and handed over after four years. I think he ruled four years. Um, uh, uh, Babangida took it. Buhari took it from a civilian presidency and ruled two years. When he was 38 years old, he took it and ruled two years. Uh, Babangida detroned him and took it and ruled. Abacha, after Babangida handed over, Abacha took the presidency again. These guys are taking it by themselves. These young people here. The, the modern young people we have are kind of uh, waiting for things to happen, for miracles to happen from somewhere. These guys take this thing by force. You get what I'm saying? They step up and they take whatever they want. So I think the mentality they had then compared to the mentality we have now is our problem. They still have that mentality. Do you know how many times Buhari contested for presidency to win? Four times. Four times. How many young people are able to sustain that kind of, uh, of uh, uh, trial? Look at Atiku now. Atiku, Atiku was crying when he picked PDP form. Let me show you. Atiku picked PDP form uh, yesterday and was crying while he was picking it because he has he has picked it so many times. He has now a form <laughs> a format. So he was crying. Let me show you. I'm trying to find it. Uh, Atiku, Abu yes. Look at it. Atiku Abubakar crying as he collects his presidential nomination form. So th this is it. So former Vice President Atiku Abubakar Friday wept as he as his presidential campaign office shortly after obtaining his um, expression of interest and uh, 
nomination form from the People's Democratic Party headquarters in Abuja. Atiku, he was filled with emotions while receiving the forms from Atiku support group, which purchased same for him. He reiterated his commitment to the Nigerian cause and a promise to do everything possible not to disappoint Nigerians if given the opportunity. Unable to overcome his emotions while a member of the ASG, uh, Princess Adeyemi was painting in graphic details the sorry state of affairs in the nation. The former vice president fought back tears as he sobbed. Okay, so what I understand that happened that made him cry was that uh, one of the ladies that was talking was painting the graphic details of how Nigeria is in, in bad shape. So Atiku wept for the nation. So the last time we saw somebody weep was during uh, Buhari's uh, campaign. Buhari weeped for Nigeria. And uh, before winning the election, the other person that weeped was El Rufai. El Rufai weeped for Nigeria before winning his uh, state. It's now, uh, maybe now that uh, Atiku is, is weeping, will he win? Because it's like weeping walks, walks in Nigeria. So that's Atiku weeping. So he picked PDP form. Atiku has tried so many times, but the thing is that he always loses in the primaries. There's always a strong candidate to, to make sure he doesn't all the time. So I think this is his fourth, third or fourth time. I can't remember. But so let's see even what people are saying in the comments that they said, why you cry? This loser, this your tears, no IT tears, waiting for the next year, real tears, smelling loser, bald head, whatever. This was a crocodile tears. What's all this drama? Articulation. If only I will vote, I would have voted him. At least he is more human than this wicked devil called Buhari. But no pee, my mumu don't do. Never again will I queue up under the hot sun to vote. I have been doing that over the years with no positive results. This one said, Drama King. He should be given a role in Kule Afolaya's next movie. This one said, This rogue is becoming one of the best actors in Nigeria alongside the Mofo that hid under the tree for 11 hours in the forest of the evil spirits. <laughs> so that's it, guys. Uh, that's it. So let me see what you guys are saying before we round up. Hi guys, okay, now what I want you guys to do is to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Go to Instagram and search for my name, Dave Onzalo. That is Instagram.com slash Dave. Dave, D A V E O Z O A L O R. You will see me. Same thing with Twitter. If you go to Twitter and search for at Dave Ozalo, you will see me. All right, I think I should put it in the comments. Some of you that are chatting so you can see it. So Instagram, Instagram. So follow me, follow me. I do post funny videos on Instagram. So I'm sure somehow you're gonna enjoy it all the time. That's me on Insta and uh, that's me on Twitter. So go to Twitter and follow, follow, follow. Follow me on Twitter. All right, so I'm waiting to see which of you have followed. So, uh, Pauline said AAC will win come 2019. That's sure. This was a PDP and APC must go. Uh, talk about constitution first. You can't run a country without a constitution. That's the thing. Uh, uh, that's cases some fortunate Toya said if not by social media, Shawore will be the next president. Hey, that's the thing. On social media, you know, Shawore has strong social media presence all the while. On social media, Shawore uh, owns Sahara Reporters. And he has been active on Sahara Reporter since 2009 till now. So he has a very large base, very, very large base. So, but election in Nigeria is not usually social media. It has, it involves a number of other dynamics. So, but let's see what happens in 2019. I'm still reading. Godwin said, anyone can go and rule us, but let them know that Nigeria need to change. That's the thing. Fundamentally, we need to change the way Nigeria uh, is structured. That's what I personally believe. Remember that when when they were creating Nigeria, no Nigeria was it was con consulted. In 1940, when they were doing the amalgamation, it was the British that were that decided that we are going to be Nigeria. It's not as if Nigeria was ordained from heaven. It was the British. So I think now the British has left almost almost uh, 
100 years, yes, 104 years that British left Nigeria, we should come together and decide, uh, renegotiate the terms of, um, of, uh, of our structure. Let's see where this structure is weak and renegotiate it. You understand? The places that is weak, the, all the people that feel alienated, the way our system works, our constitution needs, to, needs an overhaul. We need to look at things. People are from different geopolitical zones. You need to come together. That's what they call referendum, you get? So everybody come together, peacefully discuss what are your pains, what are your, what, what are your gains? How do we uh, build this country so that it will be profitable for everybody? You get? You know, Nigeria is a difficult country because there are so many tribes in one country. All like in US now, you can just count 60% uh, white, 14% black, this percent is this percent is just like four or five. You are done. You understand? But if you start counting uh, in Nigeria, we have two hundred and fifty tribes. Everybody is different. Everybody is different. So uh, we really need to look at the structure as a whole. I think our main problem is the structure. Uh, our structure promotes corruption. You understand? The way things are organized in Nigeria it promotes corruption. So even if a reverend father or a priest or a pastor is going into office. When he's going, he's clear-headed. He wants to go there and do change. But once he gets there, because of the way the thing is structured, he cannot do much. Before you know it, he's already embezzling the money. He is embezzling the money of the whole, <laughs> the whole, the whole people he's representing. You get. But if it's structured very well, like in the US, the way the structure is, you can't just steal money and go and go anywhere. You understand? It is not possible. You can't just embezzle money. In the US. I've never even heard that any like, a US politician embezzled money. You understand? It's not possible because they have a certain structure that even if your own people are supporting you, every other person will see what's happening and, and, and intervene. Their, their law is very strong. So I think Nigeria as a whole, we need to get to that point where uh, we have a very strong structure, supporting structure, uh, so that we can uh, move together as a nation. So, guys, have you followed on Instagram and Twitter? Mick Dev said the Nigerian constitution needs to change without strong laws. A country cannot uh, progress. Now, what I think that needs to change in Nigeria is we are doing election every four years. It's too costly. It's too costly. The election every four years is too costly. And it doesn't allow the elected person to cool down and work. You understand? You spend billions getting elected. Once you enter, you have to recover the billions and pay back. The other day, do you, do you know that the other day, uh, a pastor said that he 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 loaned uh, Erufai 160 million naira so that Erufai will win his governorship election, and Erufai has paid back. You understand? The the uh, pastor Tunde Bakari. I'm not making this up. Pastor Tunde Bakari, Tunde Bakari loans Erufai. So somebody wants to contest for governorship election, and the pastor, see, I gave her a fine, 160 million to contest for governor in 2015. So a pastor takes money and donates to a governorship candidate. What do you think will happen when the candidate wins? He has to pay back. You understand? And who knows whether he paid back with interest, but whatever it is, he has to pay back. So the first year, so that first two years, the person is not able to do anything, the, the elected candidate in Nigeria, because he has to pay back to everybody that supported the campaign, you know. After this person has paid back, before just before he relaxes on the third year, the 40 is upon him. You understand? Because the 40 he has to win another election, or at least make sure he's the person succeeding him wins. So to me, it's it's very it's too costly. Election in Nigeria is too costly and it's coming too soon. So what I suggest is like is that. And what I feel that will rescue the situation is that uh, we do single term six years. If you win the election as a governor, forget it. You are not winning again. There is no election for you again. You stay there six years. After six years, you pack your whatever and go. You get. So let's say you stay there six years. After the first two years, you have recovered the money you used. You have four years to chill and do work. You get what I'm saying? So me personally, I feel that single tenure six years will work for everybody, governorship candidates, presidential candidates, single tenure six years. I think the one they have done now is single tenure four years for vice president. If uh, basically if uh, if a vice president decides to run for election as president, he can only win 
once, which he can only rule once. After four years, he will quit. That's what I think that uh, they have adjusted the constitution to look like. So, but eventually, I think they have to look at single tenure six years. Good luck, Jonathan was talking about it before he left. But I think this current Senate has started discussing it. They say they want to look at it after the 2019 election. Single tenure, six years. To me, it looks cool. I think another country that has done it is uh, Turkey. Turkey implemented single tenure six years. <coughs> Once you win, relax. If you want to rule your country, you have time. Relax and rule. After six years, there's no election again. You're, you're not embezzling money to rule again and go. Somebody was also suggesting the other day that once you have taken any political office in Nigeria, the constitution should ban you from being elected into another office. Once you have been elected into one, you shouldn't be elected into any other office. You serve once and go. That's what somebody was saying. I know that will be very, very hard to implement, but there could be advantages because what I see is that most governors, after uh, as they are ruling as governors, they are thinking of their next ambition, which is either Senate House, Senate Presidency, or they want to end up as, as the president. So. If you have that kind of, of ambition, you might find yourself tempted to embezzle a lot of money in the, in the state. So it doesn't benefit the state that the person ruling them has further ambitions. So uh, to, to tackle that, if they say, OK, um, once you rule into any elected position, forget it, you're not ruling any elected position again. You can only serve as minister or become an appointee, but you can't enter the, any elected office. It will kind of save Nigeria a lot of money because people will not have that ambition to, to go contest for their elected of, uh, offices and embezzle money. So I don't know what you guys think about all this I'm saying, but does it make sense? Does it even make sense? Uh, Zeme also said, what Nigeria needs today is restructuring into a general federal system in which the fed federal units are self-governed to check the waste and excesses of the center, just like after independence. I think that makes sense. Perfect sense. If, if Nigeria is restructured into a, a, a true federal system, then all these um, agitations for self-determination will disappear. You understand? Because it's, it's, a, it's already self-determination. That's what I feel. Dan Juma said, old oh boy, you should have known that those men are soldiers and uneducated. They have no love for their country. We need a technocratic, young, dynamic, and non-analog brain. Very true. I 100% agree. 100%. 100%. So I think um, in Nigeria now we have some uh, really educated people that are in their 50s that are trying to uh, contest. Even though some of them have been in politics, some of them have not been. You understand? I think we can make a good choice from some of the candidates that are coming up now. Uh, Godwin said, anyone can go and rule us. OK, I've seen that. Mere constitutional change cannot solve Nigeria's problems. That's the well, sir. All right. So, guys, I'm rounding up here. I hope you are followed on Instagram and Twitter. And let's have a good discussion, all right, in the comments. Because once I stop this live, you can no longer comment on live. Your comments now needs to be uh, on normal comment section. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much for being here. See you guys. Thank you.